We're going to Kofun. Do you know what Kofun are? Me? Yes. Yeah, they're ancient tombs. No, the viewers at home. Oh. <laughs> okay, yeah, they're ancient burial tombs. Yes. And do you know the uh, shape of them? Yeah, they're like a, a keyhole. Yes. Yeah. Not all of them, but yeah, the mm. majority of them. Yeah, that's what makes them kind of unique. Yes. And do you know how old they are? Or something. Um. No. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Fifth century? Yeah, you know, you're, you're, okay, yeah. that was kind of the middle of the Kofun. Okay, yeah. yeah. They think the uh, first Kofun uh, was built in the uh, middle of the third century in the Nara area. And they think that tomb, well, according to legends, they think that tomb might have been for the legendary Queen Himiko. She was a queen of what was known as the Yamatai or Yamatai Koku. But yeah, so the Kofun mound tombs uh, started in the mid third century and continued to about like the late sixth century, early seventh century, when Buddhism came more into vogue and also it was just so expensive to build those things. Wait, to watch our steps, there's all these uh, huge grasshoppers. Places alive. Everywhere. There's another one, a big green one. That might have been the one I kicked. Sorry, dude. Beautiful. Oh, there he is. Oh, that was a big one. Excuse me. Thank <laughs> you. No. Oh. That one is so emboldened that it won't even fly off. It's like, yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure if the like if it there's a difference to male and female, mm. like with the colours and the size. Because the brown ones seem to be bigger. But um so I just wonder if, if they're male, female. Anybody watching if you wanna let me know? <laughs> let me know. There are a lot of them. There is a lot of them. Yeah, wouldn't you say this is a welcome break from uh, oh, yeah. Tokyo life. Oh yeah. All these bugs, I think, would be my my wife's worst nightmare. I think. <laughs> <laughs> but no, yeah, it's nice. It's really cool. Ah. Shame it's not clear enough to see uh, Fuji Sam, but. Mm. <sighs> All right, there be the tombs. Pretty cool. There's some weird sticking stuff. Yeah. And all kinds of here. Let me get. Turn into a nature channel now. <laughs> yeah, if you like insects, this is a good walk to take. Yeah. Uh, of course, if you're not, this would be the this would be an absolute nightmare for you. <laughs> Back in the uh, uh, to the fourth through sixth centuries, when uh, your homes dwellings were pit dwellers. Uh, these Kofun would have just been these massive things towering over the landscape at that time. Because they're so old, for the longest time, uh, they didn't get, people didn't really take that much notice of them. Because, you know, of course, larger structures came along. And because they've become overgrown. But when uh, many of them were first built, uh, some of them had, were lined with stones and had what was known as Haniwa, which is clay figurines all around them. But yeah, nowadays you got two, three-story houses that kind of uh, make the mounds not seem as big. But again, back, way back then, people would have been toiling in the fields, the rice paddies, and seeing these huge tombs. So here we're standing in front of, or to the side of, uh, Inariyama Kofun. This is a very interesting one because this is where they found some of the best uh, burial goods. What hopefully we'll see today in the museum, a sword that was forged that has uh, like a hundred, 115 Chinese characters on it. Most of these tombs, we have no idea who was buried in them. We can only make guesses, but this one, because of that sword, and so on, we 
do know the name of the person. We just don't really know much about them. But his name was uh, Wo Wake. And he might have been during the time of the Emperor... Uh, I can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but that guy. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Yuriaku, I think it was his name. And also interesting about this tomb, that part there, on a clear day, you can see Mount Fuji. And so they believe it was built specifically with that in mind. So it shows how important Mount Fuji was to these people already at that time. Even though really the, uh, the center of civilization was still down in Nara. This was like, this was the boonies, the outskirts back in the fifth uh, and sixth century. It kind of stayed that way for quite some time. So how do you like the view? Yeah, it's nice. You can see the whole, all of the surrounding area. Uh, yeah, it's a shame about all the industry, but... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There we are. Modern times. Oh, yeah. But it's would nice. you have wanted to climb that uh, in July? Oh, no, no way. <laughs> With a mask on? <laughs> no way. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I should point out, you know, because we are in the plague times. Yes, we're out and about, but we are wearing masks, social distancing. And more importantly, we are both fully vaxxed. Yeah. Yeah. It was two weeks ago that I got my second. Mine was about four weeks ago. Yeah. So, yeah. so I think you we're all good. You had the Moderna. Yep. So I had the Pfizer. So if, if anyone comes down with Delta, it'll probably be me. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> Fairly large structure, wouldn't you say? Yeah, it is. Actually a lot bigger than I thought. Yeah. Yeah. You know, when you look at it in the distance, it doesn't seem that big. No. But uh, yeah. So again, like back in the fifth century, this would have been quite the impressive structure for people. Oh yeah. I don't know if they would have been allowed on the top though. No. <laughs> well, they might have gone to the top and then got executed for it, but. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So with the Shogun Yama Kofu, we can actually go inside. Check it out. So here we have, I guess you would say, like a proto-samurai, the warriors of old Yamato. But in the Kofun period, you see, horses were very important. Mm. Yeah, what's unique about like uh, Shogun Yama Kofun is it's one of the few tombs where they found a horse helmet. Not sure if the horse liked wearing it though. Yeah, I don't, I don't think the horse would have liked wearing that. No. That doesn't look too comfortable. No. Does it make you think of Sutton Hoo? Um, well, I've never been there, so... Oh, I have. <laughs> oh, really? Well, yeah. does it make you think of Sutton Hoo? Okay, yes. <laughs> yeah, actually, it does in a way, like the, uh, the layout with the, the body um, and the grave goods and the weaponry, especially like the weaponry. Yeah. You can tell like this was an important person. Oh yeah. And just like with Sudden Who being a mound tomb, a barrow, a barrow as they mm -hmm. called it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, if you can imagine like a whole fleet of horses like that. Mm. It was all pretty horrific to be honest. Yeah. Yeah. Like everything, you always have to put it in perspective mm. of its time. Yeah. Uh, like in the Middle Ages, you know, it wouldn't have been as impressive. Yeah. But in a time when few people had metal, uh, metal tools or metal weapons, True. something like a horse with a helmet on it mm -hmm. charging at you would be yeah. pretty damn intimidating. Oh yeah, oh yeah, it would work. That's for sure. Hmm. 
Yeah, and that's another, we forget like how precious metal was back then. Yeah. Today we take it for granted, but yeah, back then it was so, it was a, because also it was a sign of their uh, civilization's progress right. their, yeah. to society. So being able to bury such goods was to show their status and wealth. Mm. These are, or what they found around the Kofuns is the Haniwa, clay figurines. Actually, some of them are quite new in design. In the uh, Nihon Shoki Chronicles of Ancient Japan that was compiled uh, in the uh, late 7th and early 8th century, there's a legend where these Haniwa came from. Especially they say in the past, when they would make these tombs, mm. they would bury the servants wow. in the tombs. But, but not in the tomb, but like around the outside, like just half bury them. Oh, wow. And just leave them. So there's this really macabre story in the Nihon Choki after uh, a royal member of, uh, died, mm. and the servants were crying as the uh, crows and the dogs were tearing apart their flesh. <laughs> And the emperor was so put out by that. <laughs> nice. Uh, a person came up with a way of getting rid of that. Oh. And he came up with the Haniwa. So you could say the Haniwa saved lives. Okay, okay. Fair enough. And I see Gandalf made it over to Japan at one point. Imagine living in one of these places. Mm. Look at the, uh, look how much work goes into that. Into the, ceiling. the ceilings, yeah. yeah. Yeah, again, they, they put a lot of work into mm. these homes. Kind of gonna make you think of the Tudor homes, the thatch. Yeah, it really does. It really does. Again, it's quite interesting when you have so many different, you know, opposite sides of the world, but a mm -hmm. very similar building style. To an extent. Mm. <laughs> Obviously quite different in some ways. I don't see why they would do this for exercise. <laughs> do this every day. Oh, yeah. How was your climb? <laughs> Fun. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you got to remember as well, back in the day. <laughs> There's no convenient steps to climb up either. So. <laughs> oh, yeah. When you think about it, it must have been. I doubt uh, nobody came up here. Yeah. Because it was such an ordeal just to get up here. <laughs> yeah. I mean, quite a climb. <laughs> We're on top of the tallest Kofun in the Gyoda area, uh, the Maru Hakayama Kofun. It's like 19 meters high. And it's a great view up here. And the view is very important because you can say here's where two worlds came together. The world of the ancient Kofun culture and the samurai culture. 
in 1590, a warlord, Toritomi Hideyoshi, went to war in the Kanto area, where we are now, uh, with the Go Hojo clan. And they had a whole, even though they were set up in Odawara, which is far south from here, they had a whole network of castles throughout the region. One of them being Oshi Castle here, that was um, uh, owned by the Narita clan, who were allies of the Hojo. And so this is one of the castles that needed to be taken during the uh, Hojo, uh, Go Hojo campaign. So Toyotomi sent one of his generals, Ashida Mitsunari, here to take that castle. And because the view up here is so nice, as I said, 19 meters, it probably was the tallest thing around for miles and miles. Ashida Mitsunari set up his camp here so he could view the castle there and direct his siege on that castle which is where we're going next. So what happened to you on top of the mound? Mosquitoes get you? Oh yeah. The uh, mosquitoes or the it? angry spirits of the <laughs> of the Kofun. If it was angry spirits of the Kofun, I, I could dig it, but yeah. <laughs> unfortunately it's not. All right, so what did you think of the Kofun Park? Yeah, very interesting. Um, completely different to think something I've done, you know, I've never done anything like that before, and yeah. Um, the weather was banging for it. Mm. Too many mosquitoes though. Yeah, oh my god. Too many spiders. Kind of, yeah, ooh. <laughs> yeah, September is kind of spider season in yeah. Japan. Yeah. Oh, but the mosquitoes, I think I'm weak from the loss of blood. Yeah, me too. Little bastard, or bitches actually, uh, took about a pint. <laughs> yeah. But when it comes to the uh, mound tombs, like, did you know that Japan had anything like that? I did know, yeah. I, 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 to be honest, I didn't know they were in Saitama. Oh, okay. Uh, but yeah, I'd seen them in, you know, on websites and things before. No, I mean before you came to Japan. Oh, before I came to Japan. Yeah. Uh, no. Okay, that's right. No. Yeah, it's one of those things you learn after you get here. Yeah, yeah. But it goes against the old, you know, because you know most people's image of Japan is uh, old Japan is samurai. Yeah. yeah. And to know like there's a whole other culture that existed mm. before all of that. Yeah. Yeah, so when I found out about the Kofun culture, like just blew my mind. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it was, like I said, it was really interesting. Oh, oh wait. Now this is a rare sight. Oh yeah. Yeah, what do we have here? Beer in a vending machine. Yeah, it's been a long time. Sake in a vending machine. Wow. <laughs> wow. Yeah, this is like finding an ancient relic. <laughs> yeah. They still exist. <laughs> the liquor vending machines. Yeah, they took these out of Tokyo a long time ago. Yeah. All right, well, we're here at Oshi Castle, which we were hoping was going to be illuminated but apparently they don't light, light it up on Tuesday nights, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> or because it's the plague time, they're trying to save uh, electricity for the city, who knows. <laughs> this uh, castle was built in the 1470s by the Narita clan. They were vassals of the Uesugi clan and eventually became part of, they became vassals of the Go Hojo clan. And in 1590, the warlord Toritomi Hideyoshi, as part of his uh, plan to unify the country, wanted the Hojo, the Go Hojo, to um, uh, swear obedience to him. But they didn't want to. What the hell was that? Yeah, that's the sound I heard before, man. Yeah. <laughs> it really sounds like someone like scraping yeah. their foot on the floor. I, I see what you mean, yeah. I, I like... But there's no one here. Yeah, man. Oh, that was weird. I swear that sounded like I thought there was gonna, I was gonna look uh, and see somebody behind me. All right. Anyway, so I, uh, where was I? I gotta interrupt it. So, in 1590, Toritomi Hideyoshi uh, came against the uh, the Hojo of Odawara because they would not come to Kyoto and swear fealty to him. And because the Hojo had all these satellite castles of their allies and so on, uh, he, he mounted a huge campaign to slowly chip away at the allies. 
and one of those castles was this one right here. The lord of the castle, interesting enough, was actually in Odawara with the Hojo there, where the main siege was happening. This was like a sideshow to the whole thing. Um, and the Toyotomi general, Ashida Mitsunari, he came here to take this castle. He had 23,000 troops. They only had about 600 samurai and 2,000 conscripts conscripts, so uh, farmers and townspeople pressed into military service, so they were heavily outnumbered, but because of the natural defenses of the area, the marshes and swampland and the, uh, I guess, the, the power of the, uh, their leader, they were able to hold Ashida Misenari off, and so he changed his strategy, and what he did, he built a dike and put uh, and unleashed a torrent of water hoping to drown out the castle. The reason he did that is because his lord, Toritomi Hideyoshi, took a castle that way uh, about uh, eight years earlier in, down in uh, the Kansai, Kansai region. So he thought he would re, uh, repeat the same tactic of his master. But the thing is, the castle being on higher ground survived. And so what you had was all this water surrounding the castle, and that's where it also got the name of the Floating Castle. So they were allied with the Hojo. The Hojo, uh, Go Hojo, fell. Uh, Odawara Castle fell. And this place was still holding out. The lord of the castle had to send a message to his brother to finally surrender, like almost a week after Odawara had fallen. And as I said, uh, a book was written about it, and later a movie was made. And that's what made, uh, kind of put Yoda on the map for a lot of people. So it, it actually gets more visitors. I, I don't know why it's not lit up. <laughs> I, I'm a little miffed about that. As for the castle itself, the inside, it's a reconstruction. Not much to really see. Just the usual samurai armor and some samurai swords. Uh, I've been inside before. It's not that special. More important is like, like I said, at night when it's illuminated, but especially during cherry blossom time. That's a good time to come here. All right, so now we're at Gyodashi Station on the Chichibu Line at the end of our day in Gyoda. Yeah. So what'd you think? Yeah, it was really nice. Um, very good walk. Mm. Uh, good weather. Yes. Um, shame the castle wasn't illuminated, but yeah. there we are. But yeah, I really enjoyed it. Thanks very, thank you very much, man. It was cool. So, what, what would you say was your favorite part of the day? Um, it's difficult to say. I would probably say the Kofun. Mm. Yeah, it was just you know, got that kind of mysterious kind of uh, ancient sort of vibe to it, which mm. I you know I, I quite enjoyed. Um, the weather helped. The mosquitoes mm. didn't. No. But. Um, how much blood did you lose? Oh, a good couple of pints. <laughs> you know. But yeah. I, I would say the coffin. It was all good. Mm. It was all very good. But, um, yeah, the, um, the, right, the rice paddy artwork was really cool. Mm. But once you've seen it, you've seen it, right? Mm. But, you know. but the coffin, yeah, it was, I learned a lot more there and it was, mm. you know, a bit more interesting, I would say. And the museum was nice too. Mm. Yeah, it was good. Yeah, it's kind of interesting. We kind of went through the ages because the mm. the rice art is very modern. Yeah. Uh, but the what it was depicting is from the Edo period, which mm. is from seventeenth century to the mid nineteenth century. Mm. Then we went to the ancient tombs that go all the way back to the fifth and sixth century. Yeah. And then we went to the castle. That wasn't lit up, but oh well. Mm. Uh, okay, well, the, the castle's a 20th century reconstruction, but mm. originally, originally it was a uh, Sengoku-era castle from the uh, 16th century. So, yeah, we, we've yeah. gone through the ages Certainly in have. Gyoda. Yeah. Nice. Who yeah. would have thought this small little town nice in trip time. Uh, Saitama mm. would have all this stuff here? Yeah, there you go.
All right. All right. So now we're heading back into Tokyo. To that. So I recommend, if you have the time, definitely give Gyoda. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Okay. See you. See you.